don't know. I hope. Are you hot today, Ed? Ashley's getting, getting a peek. Ashley's getting a peek behind the curtain. I hope she doesn't lose respect for us. <sighs> okay, that's to assume she had respect to start. <laughs> that is very <laughs> presumptuous. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, if there are no questions and there's nothing else to do, let's get the show on the road. All right. Y'all ready? Yep. Three, two, one. With 50 plus years of combined produce, supply chain, entrepreneurial, and business experience, Craig Slade and Ed Bertad discuss the impacts of fresh produce on their lives and health. This podcast is a casual conversation between two friends just trying to get better. This is the Fresh Cred. Welcome, everybody, to another The Fresh Cred podcast. I'm here with my good friend, Ed Bertod, our production crew, Laura Slate and Mason Hartung. And guys, uh, welcome. And it looks like somebody else has showed up in the studio that's not normal. Who's here? Hey, Ashley here, coming at you from yeah. Pflugerville, Texas. What? what? Pflugerville? Pflugerville with the P-F. Pflugerville. Okay. So and for not those non Texans, it? it's not a place in a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where I was going with it. So is it really is it is that really the name of the town? That's really the name of the town. We got fifty three thousand wow. people only twenty minutes away from Austin and about an hour and a half from San Antonio. So do you know the history on that name? Pflugerville? Um, I'd be lying if I if I try to explain it. I just know we have a, a festival every year that we're famous for, Deutschenfest. So sounds like some maybe some Czechs name that place. That's what I'm gonna <laughs> guess. There's a few Czechs. People don't know that about Texas unless you're from Texas. Uh heavy German and Czech influence, particularly Hill Country where you're at. Uh, Pflugerville area and all that over there. I used to go to a big festival as a as a young person called West Fest, uh, and polka dancing and beer drinking. That's always a part of everything in Texas. Barbecue uh, and sausage. You know they'd have barbecue, but I don't. Did the, I don't think the Germans brought that. You think? Well, I'm just saying. There's barbecue? like there's barbecue like in Sealy. Like there's certain areas or where. You have barbecue, and particularly you can tell by the sausage what influence, you know, their food is from, whether it's German or Polish. or True. Yeah, and so I, I tend to like the Polish influence from on the sausage side. I'm getting hungry. So, so I, I've, I've had the opportunity to go a couple of times to Oktoberfest. And... You know, growing up in Dallas or growing up outside, growing up in Texas, period, this great state fair of Texas, which, by the way, I think, is that kicking off this weekend? They're setting it Mason, up. Mason, is that this weekend? Yeah, Mason's shaking his head. I have no so, idea. Aren't you from Texas? Yeah. And you don't <laughs> know about the great state fair of Texas? I know. I've worked the great state, or, yeah, I've worked the fair plenty of years um, with my company out there but yeah. i don't I, I just don't go anymore i'm not interested well anyway so i i don't want to get so, i don't want the whole show to be about the great state fair of texas they were setting okay. big techs up just the other day i saw it on the news so yes you're right yeah so yeah it, it's it, it's right here if it's not this weekend it's next weekend something like that that it's getting underway i i but but to try and make a long story that i usually tell shorter than my normal stories uh I, let's I got out the first time I'm at the Oktoberfest, and I get out. It became very apparent where the Great State Fair of Texas came from because it looked like the Great State Fair of Texas over in Munich, Germany. Tents and, again, beer drinking and sausage stands. Anyway, huge German Czech influence in in Texas. Certainly, the the Great State Fair of Texas was influenced by. Uh, it, it's obvious it was a German influence, and it's a great time uh, as children, as young adults. 
we used to spend the entire month pretty much at the Great State Fair of Texas. It was basically you saved all your money just so you could go hang out there for an entire month. So, is that uh, when sodas were a nickel and apparently a pair of pants was a dollar and <laughs> shirts were fifty cents? <sighs> yes, yes, that's that's what it was. Ed, keep trying to imply that I'm old. Tell us more. <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> All right, but anyway, so Ashley's here. We've got us a guest. We 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 told you guys we we kept it a secret. Uh, we're gonna get into Ashley's story here a little bit later in the show, but Ed insisted on having his airtime, so we've got to let Ed talk a little bit to start the show off, and then we will uh, we'll get to the the meat of the matter and and uh, talk a little bit about Ashley. But Ashley, it is great to have you here. Um, Happy to be here. You know, she she's. One of the, she's got she's rocking a the fresh cred cap, so she, she is uh one of our avid listeners. Um, so uh, we are excited to have her part of this show and have her bring in her story. She's got a great story, it's going to be a lot of fun. Have a good time, Ashley. As we go through here, and I know it'll be tough with uh us and, and as much as we compete for the mic, but please just interrupt us and jump in with something, anything you got as we're talking along. So you got it. So, Ed, I'm going to kick it off to you so you can get your time in. Um, mm. What would you like to cover? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well. Um, I'm setting you up, buddy. <clears throat> I, I mean, what did I do this week? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, yes, that's what no, I'm saying. Ed. I didn't Why do did anything you do exciting what did you this, do this week? this weekend? I, you know, I was, uh, I was traveling for, for work, but nothing as exciting as you, I was in Houston this week, but um, you were out in Monterey, which it seems like you were just there. Um, so it must have been something important uh, or you rationalized as important. What was or it? I just like Monterey. What were you doing? What? Wait. So, well, I mean, I, what I was course just did you get to play while you were there? Houston? Poppy. You did. That's, That's kind of like my home course. That's your home course. It's I have an idea course. why it's your home course because it's the best value on the peninsula. It is. That's absolutely. more than likely the why that's your home on. course. Right? Okay. Great course. The, so, did you have, so yeah, did you there's have no, the bacon? There's no way. <clears throat> I had told you before they have the best bacon I've ever had in my I've life. Never eaten, I've never eaten anything there. And you've told me about that place. I, you know, I couldn't remember this time I'm there, and I could not remember what you told me I was supposed to eat. And of course, I didn't eat again. So. I mean, we've almost eliminated all pork at home. It kind of, I don't know, it, unless it's like pulled pork or bacon. It, all other items kind of gross me out now, but I don't know why. Um, but their bacon, they have a smoked bacon. They do smoke, and it's ridiculous. And it's like that thick or wide, I should say. It's pretty. It's pretty good. You should have had it. Anyway, just an so excuse to go back. That on the list, smoked bacon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I so I'm I'm now you've kind of so we can get to that organic show, but what what's this about your disdain for pork? Yeah, no, I don't have a disdain for pork. I think I just had too much of it. You know, my it's one of those things my mom made a lot growing up because it was one of my brother's favorites: pork chops, pork chops, and mole. Pork chops and chicken mole. Those two things. Pork chops and applesauce. I have had a river of mole and, and a farm of pork chops. And I just, yeah, I, I don't ever really care to have any more. So that's it. Since I had ra- since I had rata and mole, I've kind of been steered away from uh, mole. <laughs> since you had what? <laughs> rata. Rata. So if you go it. down to um, in Tor- Torreon, is it Torreon? Where was I at? I'm trying to remember the guys. Yeah, so yeah, I had rata. Are you they sure it wasn't mice. just a play on words? Is there really rata and mole? Oh no! Oh, they're psh- you can really? see them. They're little. They're creatures. Oh yeah. Because yeah, there's no like capybara that I know of, and because the only other rodent I know that people eat. <laughs> Like I think it's in Brazil is capybara, you know the big those big water mm-hmm. rats. Well, well they but eat those in rats. South Louisiana too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nutria. So here's their theory. This is a delicacy. You guys apparently you're not familiar with uh, rata. 
Uh, what was I? I can't, it was it, you know, San Luis Post to see. I think it's San Luis Post to see. So we were at. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's a delicacy down there. And supposedly these these little mice they feed under the agave plant. Um, they eat the roots, so they're super clean. Well, you know, I'm like, come on, seriously, you think people aren't just rounding up the rando mice that are running around the city not eating from the agave plant? I mean, no, kids, it's it's a real deal. This is a true story. Um, I had it. Uh, my buddy Ed, Eduardo Herbst was with me, so he can vouch for it. Um, yeah, they insisted we try it, and we did, and I got through it. It's not the worst thing I've ever eaten, um, but it's how not many ranch be waters had you had? Me. But yeah, how many ranch waters had you had <laughs> before they introduced so the this? Fact, because fact you know, is, I mean, they sell they, like they, they, you know mice in the shape. <laughs> Like chocolate mice, you know, and stuff at the store. I mean, are you sure they weren't messing yeah, with you? Yeah, these were mice, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Look, the little bones, the little bones, or little guy's bones were left over on my plate. Okay. Mm. I'm telling <laughs> That's you. That's finger licking right there, so, boy. <laughs> and what was even worse, so I'm sitting there and I, and I turned to Eddie and I said, Hey, bro. I said, Look at the guy next to us. He's like, What? I was like, Where's his bones? The guy next to me was consuming bones and all. He thought it was all good. Yeah, didn't go for second helpings. I'll be honest with you. I just stuck with the one serving, one serving of a, a rata. Uh, and that is so far from Monterey, California. I can't even, like, I know you weren't. Eating. How did we get there? I, uh, this this path went a long way from Monterey, California. Mm-hmm. And organic, it was organic, mm-hmm. organic rata. Mm-hmm. So that, maybe that ties back into the show. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? I bet you would like pork a lot better if rat was your other option. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes may i have some more uh you got to try it sometime oh yeah we could go down my food history i got a whole list of foods of not to eat and things not to try but anyway meanwhile back at opn organic produce network show outstanding show turnout was was great actually some of your cohorts were out there running around saw a couple of those folks brian Booten, um somebody else who was else was out there somebody uh was Don't it know. was with hanging out? I'm not sure who uh, went to the show. If it was, um, trying to think who was missing at the office, but Brian, maybe Jason. See, I don't know Jason, so he could have been there. Um, anyway, then point being is, is the turnout was exceptional. I, I actually thought, you know, uh, there it was a well attended show. Um, lots of people. Great content. They do such a nice job uh, of putting that show on. We sh- we were actually early out when they first did the show. We were in with a booth, um, and glad we were because it's uh, sold out every year. Super small show, and uh, actually, Ed, y'all should y'all should put that on your calendar for next year. I had so, planned to go because it is. Yeah, but first I had canceled because it was a week of TOC, and then. When that was canceled, um, something came up with an important meeting I had this week, and so I couldn't go, but I wanted to go for sure. Not, I mean, other than the fact that we could have had a podcast out there and I could have enjoyed some sub-110 degree weather. Is that what it is down in South Texas? Is no, it, but is it's it, been pretty it hot. Long? I mean, I was... Um, you know, I had about 29,000 steps yesterday, I'm just going to say. Um, yeah, I played golf in the morning and then cleaning up construction debris at my house um, the rest of the afternoon and evening. And um, it was very, very hot. Like, I almost wanted to puke a couple times that hot. I just got overheated, you know, mm, drinking of water was... and whatever, but yeah. it was pretty hot. Two a days all again? Of course, two a days for you and Gilroy weren't really that big a deal. Yeah, we talked about that last time. No, two a days weren't too bad. Yeah, I, I thought they yeah. were bad, but yeah. in retrospect, and you see these Pee Wee, I mean, you know, Bryce played Pop Warner and some in high school. Those are some tough kids. When you see kids that are like, especially the ones that are like pre junior high, pre middle school, like you can't 
make kids that age do a whole heck of a lot. So they really have to love it. You know, when you see those guys like in helmets and shoulder pads and it's August in Texas, man, it's miserable. It's hardcore. And in fact, yeah, and Granger, he, he, he did one tour of duty and seventh grade football, but uh, he spent most of his time playing soccer. And they had a tournament every year in stinking August, dude. And, and it was in west uh, west of Fort Worth. Oh, my gosh. Dusty. Hot. I mean, it was miserable just to be an attendee. I can't think. I don't even know how these kids do this. I mean, how do they get out? And then they're running full on, you know. I mean, you you know what soccer is. Yeah. They go. And, and it's a tournament. So you play the entire weekend. You'll play five, six games uh, across well, the that, weekend. I mean, that's the thing. If you yeah. love it enough, you'll do it. I mean, we played yesterday, and I don't know who was controlling the irrigation, but they had watered really heavy the night before. And so with the already uh -huh. whatever humidity we had, <laughs> the humidity that was coming out of the ground and then walking, you know, all day, I mean, you really got to want to be yeah. out there, right? Um, it was torture. Sounds like fun, Ed. It sounds great. Yeah. Well, Poppy wasn't quite that bad. So yeah. Did I'll you get a caddy? Poppy uh, was a little. Did nicer. you get one of those uh, one of those youth caddies? No, I, you, Poppy does not do that. You know. Hence, again, the value. Um, they would have a bunch of cheapo depots like me out there, and the caddies mm, could go broke. Well, maybe it was it was it was during the week. Was it during the week? It's Friday. Okay. But I don't, well, think, yeah, they, I don't think they do a four caddy. There, yeah, do they? they do. Um, well, I mean, last time I was there, they have a pretty cool pro uh, program, actually. It's called Youth on Course. And so the Northern California Golf Association owns that course. They own Poppy Hills, from what I understand. Yeah, I'm a and, member. And that's why it's relatively a good value. Um, but they also have a program with youth players that allows them. So you pay the course, and it's pretty nominal fee. I mean, it's like 50 bucks or 100 bucks, something like that. And they give, you know, half of the money goes to the program, like basically to the Northern California Golf Association. The other half goes to the caddy, and it's called Youth on Course. And then they also get um, to play and practice there, you know, free of charge for those, for those kids that, wow. that caddy. Now, the last time I did it, good kid. I mean, it made for a great experience for me because I just walked, you know, and he pushed the cart. Didn't give me a lot of feedback as far as, you know, where to play and where to stay away from and yardages, but just being able to just stroll was a great experience, especially as you know, in that weather and with that scenery. So I would totally do it again. I wish they had more programs like that in Texas to promote walking. Now, Ashley, are you a golfer? Oh no, I'm a boxer. I'm, I'm anything oh. boxing. Um, I did try golf for the first time when we uh, did TOC my first year in produce procurement four years ago. And I do have respect for the game. I do have an appreciation. Uh, I just am not involved with the sport. But before, I honestly, if I'm being honest, I didn't see it as a sport, but I do now. I can definitely see and respect um, why people enjoy it. And I probably would get more into it you know, if I had more time on my hands, but boxing is, uh, is where my love is and where my heart is. Well, definitely a different, uh, source of adrenaline getting punched in the face or punching somebody in the face versus, uh, strolling as Ed talked about it. So <laughs> different, different level of adrenaline. <laughs> For sure. It's a great stress I, reliever. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess it would be. So, uh, golf is too, I guess. Yeah. I prefer it. I was. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be good at getting punched. So, it's uh, definitely something I had to stay away from. I got real lucky um, whenever I first hit the ball because again, I didn't know nothing about golf. So they had to give me a quick run through on our first um, with my first team. Right. And um, your form is very similar to the form you need to throw. For me, it's my my right, uh, and so my form was just very, very perfect. And I hit the ball huh. and I got um, an award for the longest drive my first year. But what? That, yeah, that was literally the one and only time that I hit the ball in the, in all the times that we did TOC. I was never able to hit it that perfect, that far, that long ever again throughout the whole thing. I could, I was, I was getting pretty good at the putts, I guess, or the, yeah. the shorter ones, but yeah, the, the long one, 
it was because I wasn't thinking. And, and so after you, you know what you didn't know, I'm trying too hard. And I was putting, yeah. I just, I couldn't, I could I couldn't just let myself go and let it have happen organically. I just, I was putting too much force in it or whatever. But the first time I just didn't know, they just wanted to see what I could do. And they gave me a couple <laughs> pointers and I was like, boom. And then after that, yeah, I couldn't do it again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you tried to start reproducing it as opposed to just letting it free. You know, that that's, there's gotta be something philosophical in that, right? Something about, you know, just letting it go and just free flowing. Kind of like the show. We just let it flow. Let things happen. Hopefully it goes somewhere. Good times. <laughs> so, all right. So we got organic show. We've got our golf out of the way. Um, Ed. I mean, the other big you, news. You, you eating anything? No, the oh, other big news big was PMA news. Yeah, canceled. Right. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Yeah. I mean. Now what are we going to do? I don't know the de- Well, I wasn't going to go. Anyway, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, Ooh. that was my Colorado trip, or is. So um, I wasn't going to attend this year. I was going to send a virtual presence. I'm joking. Mm. No, I, I wasn't going to go. So I know you. <laughs> so you're not too disappointed. I'm not totally disappointed. I feel bad, you know, for obviously the organization, and I, I, I don't know. Ex- I don't know if it's more COVID related or um, hurricane damage related. I don't know really the details. I know I just started getting texts a few days ago. Hey, guess what? PMA's canceled, and that was it. Well, I think it's a combination of everything, right? It's, you know, it's one of those things where it started to feel like it's just not meant to be. COVID certainly mm-hmm. was not good. Yeah, Lots of people started. From a financial standpoint, unless it's an act of God, you as an organization, you're not going to get out of contracts without being heavily penalized. So um, I have to think that it's likely a a municipal thing or a convention center thing or a weather related (laughs) event type. Yeah, it's you you don't just pull out of shows like that, you know, you know, from our experiences in the past. Um, Yep. it, It just doesn't happen. So you usually have to be able to post up. A viable reason for us it was for this Viva, the year we skipped viva it was um there was a shelter in place order i mean you can't you can't get around a shelter in place order so that was that was our um rationale or defense i should say no you you were spot on with that uh and I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm sure. I'm sure they got a plan. Uh, you know, New Orleans having the weather event might have been their their big out, right? Because I think uh, the National Guard or somebody's like at our host hotel right now. Um, so, I'm sure that that had some effect on it. Wow. So. Hey, something before we get get along, Ashley, I wanted to let you know just for future reference. Uh, so the area, this is Pflugerville. The area was initially settled by guess what? German. German immigrant, yes, <clears throat> and it was Henry Fluger. That's P F L U G E R Fluger, senior. So apparently he's the he had a junior, I guess. Eighteen oh three to eighteen sixty seven. Apparently that was and then members of his family from eighteen forty nine into eighteen fifty. Fluger has been a wealthy farm, all wealthy farming community, and oh. Had been a wealthy farmer in Germany, but lost all his property during the Persian War. That's a history right there, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Did you realize the, the, the it's, what? It, that's like three degrees separation between you and the Persian uh, War, Prussia. Yeah, well, no, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. I had a feeling your instincts were right, though, Craig. Thanks. Yeah. I thought like mine were. I thought Dr. <laughs> reading skills. Had to do with my it. reading skills aren't that great, but my 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 instincts are good. What did you say, Ed? What funny remark did you have there? Nothing. El Frencho, El Frenchy. Nothing. So, I just, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a cool story. Now I know a little more about Pflugerville, and so does everybody else. You guys should get to Pflugerville sometime. What when next time we're in Pflugerville? What's 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 the one thing we should do, Ashley, when strolling through Pflugerville? Ooh, what a tough question. Um, the one thing you should do when strolling in Pflugerville. 
Um, we have a huge Baptist church that a lot of folks like to stop and visit just because it takes up almost a whole corner of a, of a street. Um, downtown Pflugerville, just like any old school downtown, has some really neat buildings um, that you can take pictures of. We have a, a house. It's called a, the Pink House. There's this gentleman who um, is disabled, and he literally painted his entire house this Petmo Bismo color because it All makes right. him happy. And he happens to be in like an old school part of Pflugerville, so it's not um, developed by any HOA. So it's you got 50% of the community who hates it and 50% of the community who loves it. <laughs> but those are the first things that come to mind. Of I think the pink house, I think that's got to be the winner. <laughs> I'm seeing the Pepto Bisbal house the, the next time I'm in town. So, there and maybe go. some barbecue. Uh, according to Ed, um, there's some barbecue there. In Pflugerville? That's what Ed said. That's no, the I first thing he mentioned. She, she, were, she was talking about Lockhart. That's when I mentioned it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So, no barbecue in Pflugerville. Just a pink house and Pepto and, and beer, maybe. Maybe they've got good beer there. There's mm. great snow cones. Great snow cones. Snow cones. Mm. Snow cones. Stand snow cone everywhere. capital of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever need help with the pink house, we've got some HOA members on our WhatsApp. Um, chat that I'd love to turn loose on that on him if you need some help with him. <laughs> Hopefully none of them listen. So to your this. new HOAs. <laughs> Obviously, Ed's cool design for the front of his house is getting <laughs> nixed. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like they don't like it. No, it's yeah, nothing. No, it's nothing like that. I was just joking. Oh, wait a There's second. just a lot of you want to do purple <laughs> shutters. You wanted to do purple shutters. Dialogue. No. You know me. I'm not. Well, one of those. Cu- one of those cutout produce guys from the Salinas Valley. Yeah, I'm. I'm a conformist. That's what you need. You need a picture of you out there doing something like with an FCO RPC. Like the produce got out. You familiar with? If you've been, to, you've been to Salinas, yeah. Oh yeah, actually, I think your story takes place in Salinas or it's out in California. I know that. So yeah, you're one hundred. But you know those big cutout produce people. Yeah. I love that art. Yeah, though they're so cool. I think so, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. So, um, Craig, one of these days, I'm going to make right. one of those of you. I want. <laughs> I want one of those. I really do, <laughs> man. I'm not sure where we would I put think it. Great, but. It would be Flat Craig. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> well, they've got them at the airport. Maybe I could put one at Tucson Airport. And people coming to town, they can see me there. That'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe, you know what? We could maybe get one done of you and I doing a podcast. Sure. You could start it for Viva. We could st- You know what? We're going to get one done of me and you, and that'll be like the intro for our podcast. It's going to be just you and I in the big cutout. And you'll have an RPC, and I'll have a couple of pieces of squash. Mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. God, this show is such an idea generation thing. This is like an idea tank. Yeah. Idea tank. I love it. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's hustle along because I want to get to Ashley, uh, the main event. Uh, pun intended, by the way, since you are a boxer. Um, but uh, before we do, Ed, any any quotes, any food this week? I mean, you. I know you eat. And in fact, I got a request for your special bowl recipe that you promised me that you'd send. All I wanted was a recipe, and you're going to make a video. You can't just send me the recipe. So now the person's like a week later, like, hey, can that guy send me that recipe? He's like, no, he's making a video. We'll get to you someday. So anyway. Well, what you eating? What you quoting? <laughs> I mean, you got to knock me down first so you can build me back up. <laughs> right? I did tell you I was on the this road all like week and got home like at 10 o'clock on Friday night. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll get the video done, though. I, no, I you didn't. You said I went to Houston. And then you you diverted on to my story. You said, I, I said, hey, what you been doing? I went to Houston. By the way, what were you doing in California? So you told us nothing about Houston. So, oh. Well, I was please. in Houston. But I will say I didn't get broken into, which was nice. You know, the last time in San Antonio I got broken into. But um, the funny thing is. I stayed downtown, got a great rate downtown, had a friend downtown I wanted to see, and just, yeah, that's where I stayed. And um, 
a happy coincidence that my hotel was on the other end of the block of the Houston Police Department. So pretty safe place to stay. Um, yeah. Anyway, no issues. Um, so where were we? You were asking something else. Food. Food. Um, What'd you eat? What'd you eat? Yeah. Food-wise, nothing too exciting. Oh. I will tell you I had a great new coconut water, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I was out on the west side of town um, late one evening, and I hadn't had dinner because I messed up. I had breakfast that morning, skipped lunch. It threw me all off. No fasting that day. And, um, man, I was tempted. Like, it's crazy when you're out on traveling – it's so easy to say, oh, man, I'm just going to have, you know, n- nothing against Popeye's or Whataburger or anybody. But, like, I'm, I was out in Katy and um, by the mall. I had gone to Bass Pro Shops, okay? Um, okay. And it was... Not to your not to your first love, to your second love. Because <laughs> your first love is is uh, Cabela's. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, so. they're owned by... They're owned, they bought each other. I don't know. I think Bass Pro bought... Cabela's, something like that. Um, so yeah, but Cabela's is like the it's like the Ritz Carlton of those two stores. Yeah. come on, let's be yeah. Real. And going nice there stores. is like going Bass Pros for yeah. is like going to H E B without eating, hungry. You know, um, it's pretty bad. <laughs> like I get sensory overload a lot of the times. Where I'll go in there for a bunch <laughs> of things and I'll come out with nothing because it's just too hard to make decisions. And that's what I did. But anyway, I hadn't eaten anything, so that didn't help. <clears throat> And I couldn't find anything to eat, f- couldn't find anything to eat. And I was going to like have some fried chicken or something. And you know what? Another one of those landmark for me instances where I practice self-control and, you know, next time it gets easier. Next time it get easier. Um, I went over to HEB. I grabbed a bowl salad and some um, spring rolls from the sushi um, display and then some cut fruit. And actually, was pretty full when I was done. But my point is, I you know ate that in my truck, listening to the radio, and then went to my hotel. So real exciting. Um, not as exciting as my trips were definitely years ago. Um, you know when I ate everything in sight and had a couple drinks and um, yeah, this is a lot less exciting. But I practice self control. And so anyway, the coconut water I had was it's called Harmless Harvest Organic Coconut Water. And it's really, really good. Um, All right. Yeah, don't know a lot about the company. Um, I did read on the bottle that it's pink. Apparently, real coconut water is pink. I don't know. We're going to get some more today. And then just another product that I love um, that's a Texas-based company called Thunderbird. Thunderbird Bars. They're organic, paleo, et cetera. Um, They're really good. So for a snack. I like nice. Thunderbird bars. Well, those are all very good. Yeah. Thunderbird bars. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What do you got? Sweet. Well, uh, I went the I'm long way around that, right by the way. It. I'm sorry. I, I know I went the long way around you did, that. But. You know what? You did a great job. I want to I wanna ta- take my hat off because I thought that was an excellent description you know and i visualize you sitting in the truck although i gotta be honest you kind of felt a little sorry for you because like were you in like a parking lot yeah i was happy randomly just sitting there yeah i was happy salad. you know i know but and you know the combo i found know. a new combo thought, poor guy no I, I found a new cut fruit combo that i'd never tried together that's really good i guess those are half pints um it's mango coconut kiwi man that is a combo i wouldn't have expected that to really like and it's real coconut like it's slivers of real coconut it was really good i think ashley may know something about some of those things i don't know you may be speak you may be speaking her lingo for Uh, sure that the the (laughs) flavors that they're putting together these days are just really something else they they are taking uh, mixed fruit to a whole nother level Mango and strawberry is another really good combo that I don't think a lot of people consider really good. All right. So I quickly into mine. So, you know, I've been on the road all week. I did not, I, I'm not, I'm no, my, my discipline stinks when I'm on the road. So I've yet to be able to change that part of my life. I need to be home to control myself. That's just, it's come to that. Right. Cause I, 
I'm not sitting in the parking lot eating salads. You're I letting yourself you. off the hook. I'm still eating. You're letting yourself <laughs> off the hook. I'm letting myself. <laughs> I'm still. We're not uh, letting you off the hook. Still, You're letting uh, yourself off the hook. <laughs> I'm just being full up. I'm full on. Look at this over here. I'm on the road, buddy. (laughs) It's a a diversion (laughs) tactic. Hey, over here. Don't look at that. (laughs) Exactly. Well, uh, I wish I could be sitting in a park and not eating a salad, I guess, and drinking um, healthy coconut water. I sent sent, uh, a picture. uh, (laughs) Selfie? uh, Yeah, no, I sent a picture um, to somebody and said... um, you know, it's pretty sad when, like, I actually felt guilty. You know, I've gotten so conscious of what I'm eating, and obviously not perfect, but, like, I knew there was, you know, a lot of sugar and that much fruit. I had a lot of fruit, you know, and there was a lot of volume of food that I had, and I thought, man, it's pretty sad when I start feeling guilty about eating what I'm eating right now. Like, it's, I think maybe it's time for a little reevaluation. <laughs> um, but, yeah, anyway. So, Back to you letting yourself off the hook. So I come back. So, yeah. So yeah. So I get back. All right. So so I have this. So this is this is another one of those super good hacks to make things quick. And so there's a there's a, there's a it's called Vicky's Kitchen Chicken Breast stuffed with broccoli. Now I read the ingredients list. I mean, it's so it's all organic, uh, but it's. You can read every ingredient on here. Uh, I won't go through each one of them, but it's, you know, broccoli florets and cheese. Cheese is probably the worst thing on this, right? It does have cheese in it, which, you know, dairy products uh, we've talked about are not that great. But anyway, Vicky's Kitchen Broccoli. It's a it's a chicken breast stuffed with broccoli and cheese and rice, I believe. It's got rice in it. Uh, and then I grilled up some asparagus. So, you know, so, so basically I'm able to take these chicken breasts, which come – um, yeah, I think they're in the, in the dairy section. They're not frozen. Um, but you put that in the oven and then you clean up your, your asparagus, throw that in a dish with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. And then uh, I put some rice on the stove 2020, but I mean, literally, cause I was setting up my new equipment here in the studio. Uh, and so I was able to get all this stuff cooked. So I had asparagus, rice, organic chicken and broccoli, um, outstanding. But certainly probably the healthiest thing I ate all week. Um, and uh, I think I drank regular water. So it was it was all straight up healthy. Good to be back at home where I can actually uh, discipline myself and not be tempted. That's really neat how your body and your mindset gets into that position when you maybe you're not eating clean or eating healthy all the time, but when you start getting in those habits, then eating not clean or eating out or getting out of your pattern, that's what's out of the ordinary. So your body craves that routine that you had before you left. And that's really, really awesome. I am finally there two years later to where my body, when, when I'm out of whack or I'm not, I'm out of routine, my body craves for me to get back on track. That's an excellent point. And you know what? That's probably an excellent segue. Uh, That's into the real gift. Your story. Of it all. So, yeah. yeah. What's that? I said that's the real gift of it all, actually. You know? Yeah. Wow, what a great show. Thanks for listening to part one of our special guest episode with Ashley Porter. Next week, Ashley opens up and shares her health journey and experience with clean eating. You won't want to miss it.